Welcome. In this video, I'll be walking you through how I cast my propellant for my custom rocket motor. First up, I start with this lubricant and I lube up the finisil and the base plate. The finisil's on the right, base plate's on the left. I try to get a good even layer on it because there's been many times where I don't and the parts don't come out at the end and I need to break the grain and try again. After I got the finisil and base plate lubed, I put them together. The base plate has a special little slot for the finisil to sit in. Then I grab the bottom section of the fuel grain and put it in. There is a piece of tape that just helps with fitting it into my mold better. I hot glue this just so when I tamp it up and down to get air bubbles out, it doesn't come unattached and spill the propellant everywhere. And then in the middle of the video, my sorbitol came from Amazon. I buy around two pounds at a time. This bag is around 20 bucks, so it's not terrible and it can make a lot of propellant. Then I open it up and pour it in my little sorbitol jar. I like to keep most of my chemicals in small jars because it's easier for measuring than you need to measure out of the bag because it's a pain sometimes. Then I assemble the center coring rod. It is just a bolt, a half inch bolt over some silicone tubing I got off of Amazon. Here's the formula that I'm using today. I'm not gonna go too in depth of that. If you guys would like a video, please comment below. Now I measure out my milled potassium nitrate. This serves as an oxidizer in this fuel. I tend not to use as much milled as granular because the milled usually clumps up and makes the consistency of the fuel very thick. The milled potassium nitrate tends to clump up, so I do like to mash it down on the sides of the glass to make it more fine. And like all the other ingredients, I add it to a mason jar to be able to mix up at the end. And then I measure out the granular potassium nitrate. And then I also add to the mason jar for mixing. After both potassium nitrates, I have the sorbel. This is the fuel of the propellant, and I mix it up and add that to the mason jar. Then last to the dry mix, I add the red iron oxide. This acts as a catalyst and speeds up the reaction of the burning of the propellant. Here's the final dry mix in a mason jar, and I need to shake this for very long to make sure everything's incorporated. And then I have one more ingredient, SLS. This is my first time using it. It's supposed to decrease surface tension of the propellant, making it easier to pour in and prevent less air bubbles. I add this once the fuel is melted down. Now I pour the propellant into a pot. I have the skillet on medium and I just stir this for around 10 minutes, making sure it does not exceed 250 degrees. Once it's a liquid, I will add the SLS and mix it thoroughly to fully incorporate it. And now it's time to pour the propellant into the mold. After that, I add the cap that keeps the corn rod center, and then I tamp down the propellant a lot to get rid of air bubbles. Now I let that sit for 12 hours to dry and harden, and then I start with the top section. I connect the top section by just taping it at the seam, and then I do the whole propellant mix again. I won't bore you with that, here's just a sped up version of melting it down. And then I pour it out into the propellant I casted the day before. Now I put the cap on, tamp it down, and give it another 12 hours to harden. Once again, I measure, mix, and melt the propellant and pour it in on top. Now we are nearly done. I give it at least 48 hours to fully harden before demolding it. And I start by pulling out the bolt. The bolt is always very hard to pull out because there's so much suction at the bottom. Once the bolt's out, I will pull out the silicone tubing. This is definitely one of my favorite parts and most satisfying. Now it's time to take off the base plate. A clever way I thought to get the finisil out was to add a dowel and hit it with a hammer. Remember it's heavily lubricated so it comes out very easily. Before previous attempts it has not and it ruined the grain. Now you can see there are a few imperfections from air bubbles. It's easily fixable though. I first grab some of the extra of the propellant that I have on a watch glass and I melt that down. Here's a better close up of some of the bubbles. 
Once the propellant's melted, I use a little tool to scoop in the propellant. It dries pretty quick because there's barely any that I'm adding. And now the final step. The propellant settles and shrinks once it cools, so there's a little bit of a void. This is easily fixable by just adding in a section of the silicone tubing to prevent the propellant from going down and just putting a little bit on top. And then just like that, you have a pound and a quarter of propellant with a Finisil geometry. It takes a little bit of time, a lot of time within waiting for it to harden, but overall it's a pretty easy process. I've refined this down a lot. The first time I did this, honestly, the first multiple times I've done this, it has not turned out like this. For storage, I wrap it up in a paper towel and tape it shut, and then I add it to a bag with silica gel packets to prevent moisture from getting into the propellant and ruining it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something new today. I would just like to remind you guys to please subscribe, comment, and like. Also, you can buy me a cup of coffee if you'd like to support. Link is in my bio. Thank you.